If you don't embrace change, then you'll fall in love with irrelevance. It's been about a decade since I last worked on television. So when I was unexpectedly offered to join this award-winning team as the host of Real Talk, that has built a huge following, a credibility in conversations that are dear to my heart, I simply couldn't say no. I wanted to be clear from the onset that I do have an agenda. I believe there's a calling for all of us, and I know that every human being has value and purpose, that the real work of our lives is to become aware and awakened, to discover and to connect more deeply with the world around us. And so I want to engage with you. I want to discuss the things that matter to both you and I. And so I look forward to forming great relationships with you. I look forward to setting that date with you every day at 6 p.m. so that we can discover, so that we can heal and explore this life journey together. I am Azania Mosaka, and welcome to a new era of Real Talk. She's referred to as South Africa's original it girl. If her social media numbers are anything to go by, she's easily SA's most popular celebrity. She burst on the scene presenting live and soon conquering top billing and Afternoon Express. She's been a prolific brand ambassador, representing several top brands in her 15 year career. And now she's the star of her own reality show, extending her profile as a presenter, author, and businesswoman. Her name has become a verb. Hey, having introduced us to what is now known as Binglish, <laughs> with the way that she speaks, further adding to the South African lexicon. And in her own words, she has that tsa, tsa, tsa. A woman who is seemingly has it all, but does she? When you look at 2017, the year had mixed fortunes for her. And 2018 has not been without its fair share of controversies. For her first sit down on Real Talk, Bonang Mokel, Mateva. How are you? <laughs> I'm super. I'm good. Gosh. Gosh. Can you believe the pandemonium? We announced that you'd be on the show on Friday. Yes. There was absolute pandemonium on social media. I know. It was all over the place. But I think people were, you know, it was a mix of both. Yes. You starting your new yes. show, obviously. Congratulations. Thank you. And I think me doing my first sit down TV interview in, I think, over a year. But the you know? prevailing question was, why now? I think the prevailing question is, congratulations to you, oh, ma'am. Oh, I Jack think we die. need to congratulate you on your show, <laughs> all right? I'm going to take over for a couple of moments. Oh so I'm going gosh. to, I've got something very special for you, Aza. This is your oh. first show. We need to celebrate you. Queen so Bee, please, you step too. in. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some flowers for you. Congratulations. You you, congratulations. Oh. Oh. I'm so, so honored to be your first guest. Yay. Have a seat. I have a few Look questions for you, Look obviously. <laughs> Precious. Obviously. Precious. So before we get to me, we want to know about you, right? Mm -hmm. You said the offer to, to uh, host the show was something that you had to... Unexpected. 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 Now, tell me how long it took for you to kind of chew on the decision. And, you know, why did you know that It was within seconds yes? because I had such a great time standing in within seconds. Yeah. But I was surprised by the question, of course, by the offer. And so, you know, what are some of the things that you took into consideration that you, you know, my said... My time, uh -huh. um, the demands on my life. Can I still do this <laughs> after so long? Long. Um, yeah, pretty much because, you know, running a business, being a parent, yes. you look at what you're juggling. It's a full life. So can you add this big responsibility? So I had to dare. Absolutely. I never backed down from a challenge, actually. I had you to haven't. Dare. TV challenges. Absolutely. TV, and this radio, is not the, all of it. This is not the first time South Africans are seeing you on TV. I mean, you've been on Pop Stars. Yes. The Baseline. We judged together. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, so your love for TV never, ever left. No, right? but where did you where did you tuck it into? Where was it all this time? Um, I had to put it aside. I put it in a box, mm -hmm. hid it away, yeah. sometime, like just somewhere far away, because the right shows weren't coming along. That's another thing. Yes. You also have to check with yourself as to whether the time is right, as to whether it resonates with who you are and what mm -hmm. you want to be doing at that time. I was excited to go into business, so growing business was a great challenge for me. Okay. And I felt like I'd been there, done that. Time for new challenges. So what is it about Aza's life right now that the timing is perfect? I'm older, I'm uh -huh. wiser. I'm more self-assured. I trust my voice so much more. Yeah, and a bit braver too. So there are a couple of things that people don't know about Azra, right? Yeah. You are <laughs> <laughs> currently seeking
getting a private pilot's license. Yes. How's that going and why the decision to do that? It was a childhood dream. Of all the things dream. you could do in the world, It right? was a childhood dream. I remember mm -hmm. looking into uh, the cockpit of an airplane at the airport and thinking one day I want to commandeer a craft like this. Oh, wow. And so left that dream as well okay. because it was a little bit challenging getting into the cadets program. But here we are today, older and able to do it. The are resources flying? are there. Are I'm you learning, flying? I'm learning, I'm learning. Not yet. But I'm going to take over now. Enough of you, okay. enough of you All asking right, me the questions. Question, but then, okay. Yeah. Whatever. If we have time later, because there's just still so much. There is. There's still so there much. Is. There's that smile. There you is. know, of the shoes, the style, the bags, there's one thing I love about you. It's that smile. Thank you. It just lights up a room. Thank you very much. And I'm sure you always get those compliments. Thank but you. speaking of dreams, you wanted to be a teacher. You talk about having wanted to be a yes. teacher. Yes. What happened to that? I did. I remember when I left, uh, I think about 15 or 16, I always wanted to be a teacher. A lot of the people in my, in my life are teachers. My mother you know, is a teacher. My late grandmother was a teacher and a nurse. My, one of my aunts is a grade two teacher. Yeah. So there are a lot of teachers. My father is a, 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 a professor. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's, it's sort of in my DNA. I remember wanting to teach grade two English, <laughs> going to the University of Johannesburg, trying to find space, you know, in the education department. Obviously, uh, yeah. the, I ran out of time and that was that. So I went on to do a BA marketing communications. Mm -hmm. And it's just because I was surrounded by teachers. And I have great respect for teachers. You right. Know? Um, so yeah. now your life has taken a completely different turn. You know, you're doing something that was very different ambition to when you were younger growing up in Mafike. Yes. So what is your purpose? Have you found it yet? Have you figured it out yet? Yes. I think I am living my purpose at the moment, whether it's, it's to inspire via words, to inspire via my work, to inspire via my actions, to inspire via the life that I lead, mm -hmm. to inspire via my bravery, my, uh, um, you know, my awesomeness, my greatness, just being brave enough to live a full and happy life wow. and being brave enough to make mistakes in front of the world and pick yourself up and carry on. I think that is my purpose. I think my purpose is to spread love, to yeah. be love, and to remind every person that you can do it. You just have to wake up in the morning. Not a lot of people, especially women, would own that part or be able to confidently say, I am great. Yeah. I am magnificent. We always shy away from owning that in ourselves. Um, that's very, very true. And it's something that I do say that people kind of find it difficult to celebrate themselves. Mm -hmm. Whether it is something that you have done for yourself, something you've worked towards. I think we ha we're very conservative. Yeah, you yeah, know, we have yeah. this thing of Ubuntu that you have to just you know, kind of take into respect people that are around you. Is that why you love Nigeria too so much? fleshy, too. Maybe, that's coming. <laughs> I'll tell you why I love that place so much. But, you know, South Africans are very conservative. We are, we, we think for ourselves and we also think for the people around us. So mm -hmm. oftentimes we tend to, Yes, you know, hold back a little yeah, bit. And a then you add bit. to that being female as well. Absolutely. You well, know? you look stunning. It's Thank a pleasure you. to have you Thank on. You. I want us to have a heart to heart. I can't wait. Just get behind the veil and discover all the wonders and beauty yes. of Queen Bee, she wait. reigns supreme. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just getting started, and I know that many of you have a lot more questions and a lot more that you want to know about Queen Bee herself. So put your money where your mouth is and start sending us those voice notes. The, the number is on our screens right now. So when we come back for more Real Talk, we'll discover a whole lot more, especially the business side of this powerhouse for Nang Matema. Sure. She was named South Africa's biggest digital influencer in 2013 with 500,000 followers on Twitter and 500,000 on Facebook. And she's maintained her social media poll position and today has a combined following of 6 million across Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Now, that must be why that she believes she's in a league of her own and that nobody else comes close to being her competition. Yeah? Yes. So how about Boni? <laughs> not necessarily. Not necessarily. I mean, a competition is healthy. Yes. But I think the best kind of competition is, uh, you know, when you compete with yourself, the betterment of yourself. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, when you compete with other people, it tends to be quite distracting. It, it removes you away from what you were doing to mm. kind of uh, complete what you were doing, what you want to flourish and what you want to accomplish. Right. Uh, and and I think, you know, the, when, you, when you compete with yourself, you better yourself and therefore whether other people are happy or not, it won't, it won't really matter. Because right. Because anyone who studied how you behave on social media, what you post, how you 
manage your social media platforms can see that there's rationale, that it's yes. all very deliberate, it's all very calculated, yes. which I think a lot of people don't do to the same efficiency and profitability that you've managed to do it with. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you, what I have found about social media, that it has, it's slowly starting to be just as important as traditional media, mm -hmm. whether it's TV, a TV interview, a radio interview, a cover of a magazine. Absolutely. You know, I tend to get the same hits. Uh, I get, tend to get the same interaction as I do, would do on a traditional media, you know. Um, so I've seen the importance of it. I respect it. Mm -hmm. I use it as another level, uh, another way to leverage my brand to make money. And I think once you respect it, you can respect what you can achieve from it. Right. And it will change how you approach and use it. So, and you've also gone on to say that you can see the gaps. Yes. Is there an opportunity? Are you looking to branch into that direction of giving guidance, of giving uh, different influences, different celebrities insights on to how I would, they can Yeah, I would love you. Like, I would love to. Like, online reputation yeah, you've management. you've seen mine. You've seen mine. Yeah. So tell me, what can I, I start mean, I doing? Talk about it. I, I talk, can start doing? <laughs> I talk about it all the time. You need to be active, Aza. You need to be actually be on, Rolling my on an app, you know, to like actually tweet and like post pictures. But I, I, I would love to. I mean, online Online reputation management mm -hmm. is very important. I mean, you can lose jobs, reputations, you can lose uh, respect. There's a lot of things that can happen on social media that could change how people perceive you. But it's also a beast. It's an incredible beast because people will love you the one minute and then the next day they are trolling you, they are saying all sorts of things. How do you deal with that? Do you, you need, even look at the comments? You do. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't not, not see them. Yeah. I mean, they're there. They're in my mentions. But you need to find a way to use it to your benefit. Right. To use the trolling and okay. the meanness to your benefit. But you know, my mom always says to me when, when things are happening, I think whether it's social media or just life, you know when there's commotion, there's, there's, my mother always says to me, peace, be still. Mm -hmm. Because there's something about commotion. But you see, you don't weigh in. You don't weigh in on some of these things. And what it does with your carefully managed <laughs> image, it leaves <laughs> so much room for people to make their own conclusions, for them to fill these gaps. Because there have been a number of dramas, numbers, number of controversies, Bonang versus Pearl Tusi, Bonang versus whoever, and you just sit it out. Does, yeah. that, does this not allow for other opinions? or other conclusions to be drawn because you're Absolutely, silent. and I'm okay with that. I'll tell you why. I am Cancerian, so I'm not very combative. I don't, I don't like battles, so I stay out of them. Um, and also, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I tend to get back into my shell right. when there's a lot of commotion. You know what I mean? Um, I, 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 I'm very, yeah, mm. I, 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 try, I'm, I try not to get involved. Okay. I want to talk about this Personally, I'm, I'm that kind of person. But also, yeah. and then what? Mm -hmm. After, mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, ha and then what? Mm -hmm. After Uruhakana and all of that, then what? Right. I, I tend to not waste my time on things that are not beneficial. Because you can never get time back, but you can get money back. Mm -hmm. So after all of that, then what? Mm. You know, over the years, you've had different mentors, be it in radio, yes. uh, and it would be interesting to hear who your mentors are as far as the business is concerned and how you conduct your social media. But there are a couple of people who have influenced you. Yes. Um, and some of them are leading women in our industry. So who is it? Who do you look up to? Who oh, I mean, there's so many for dif different reasons. You know, Basisana Kumalo, I absolutely adore. Kangi Lomo, I love. Uh, Melanie Bala, you know, was uh, one of the ladies that I looked up to. You talk a lot up. about Unati. Unati, I adore. You know, mm. uh, people like Lupi. Uh, you, you know, it's not necessarily women. It's a, it's a you know, Uncle Bob Mabena. There are people who have, <laughs> who have done so many things and have kind of said so many things to me. You know, Andile Ngube, Dumi Rabanye. They are everywhere. Uh, Leo Mania, the list goes yes, on and on yes, and on. Leo. So it's not particularly uh, women. You know, there are a lot of people who have been involved, who have molded and helped build Brand Bonang. Yeah, well, and in light of that, in light of that, we caught up with Vasitsana yes. recently, oh! and she knew that you were going to be on the show, okay. and this is what she had to say. Oh I think the first time I sighted Bonang was on live, um, watching television, and here was this young energy, um, somebody who just came with a unique signature, and I thought, hmm, that's a new talent. 
and to see how she's grown over the years uh, bears testament to her work ethic. Bonang works hard, um, Bonang dares, Bonang is not afraid to fail, um, more so she continues uh, to perfect her craft in anything that she does. And, um, and, and you know, when she cites me as one of her mentors, for me it says then maybe I've done something right where young people have gleaned something from my generation and our experiences and they're writing their new narrative about black excellence, about black girl excellence. And this industry needs young people who have the dedication, the commitment, the passion, the zeal, the fire, the hunger. And, and she has all of that in some. Mm, they wow. kicked open the doors, right? They, they did, they and we the came gushing in. Yeah, yeah. That laid the foundation for Absolutely. people like you. Absolutely. How does that make you feel hearing her say that? I'm grateful. You know, I am, I'm, I'm grateful to, to have somebody you watched on TV aspire to be like, had the opportunity to work with, um, ha say that is... is you know, it's like, wow, okay, yeah. it's a full 360. And it doesn't end there. There's a memorable cover that you did for Destiny. Yes. So we asked Kanye as well yes. what it was like working with you on that project. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Bonang. Um, such an honor and uh, a pleasure to be sharing this uh, message for you, which I believe is a surprise. Um, the thing that I... Um, find impressive about you, Bonang, is just your focus and your self-belief and your decision, which you've clearly made, that um, nothing is going to stop you and that uh, when obstacles come your way, you find your way around them um, and when opportunities are not necessarily the way you want them to be, you refashion them and recreate them. Um, and I think those are such essential qualities uh, from a spiritual level. I think that that kind of faith and determination and focus inevitably attracts to you um, the things you desire. Um, and from a business point of view, that's what it takes to succeed in business. So um, I have no doubt that you are going to go on to do incredible things. You've already shown young women um, what it is to manage yourself, particularly in the entertainment industry, as a brand. Um, and I think that now with some of the transitions you're making, you're turning that into a sustainable and long-term business. And, um, and that's really what it's all about. It's about uh, making the most of every phase of one's life and, and evolving as time goes on, as trends change, and as one's uh, stage in life changes. So good on you, girl, and onwards and upwards to you. Love you loads. Bye. <laughs> Cool. That's amazing. As complimentary as it may be, I'm sure you feel really good. What are you stopping Very tears? Good. Yeah, I'm just like, wow, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's huge. It's, it's big. Yeah. It really is big. You know, it's, uh, it's women I look up to, women I work every hard to be like. But there's a women. responsibility on your shoulders now. Absolutely. There's an expectation. Absolutely. That's why I think I conduct myself the way I do. That's why I take everything so seriously. That why, that's why I, I, I keep my head down and I, you know, I... I I keep the focus because I can see the bigger picture. There is a bigger reason. Right. Yeah. Well, let me give you a moment to catch your breath <laughs> after all of that. <laughs> well, it was the hashtag that got the likes of seasoned journalist Rudy Klabi weighing in on why everyone involves themselves in a woman's decision to do as she pleases with her body. Hashtag I am Bonang and Bonang's thoughts on the matter next. and collected. That's all Bonang Mateba ever portrays when she's being made the butt of crude jokes, getting her name dragged through the headlines, or when the social media trolls are going for blood. But what happens at the end of a long day of being the topic of national conversation? What goes through her mind as she sits quietly with her thoughts? And what does it take for her to not allow all the negativity to fester? Bonang, yes. recently there was a very crude tweet mm -hmm. about the number of partners you've had mm -hmm. and you responded a few times that you've responded that <laughs> yeah. you've weighed in mm -hmm. you said my private parts my business and that mm -hmm. spawned the hashtag I am Bonang yes. so why did you weigh in on that particularly 
Um, I of thought all the things that people say. Why you know, not? because what I find when people troll me, you know, because they can't really attack my talent. They can't really attack. Uh, my, how good I am at my job. They can't attack my style. They can't attack my face or anything else. So they usually go for my private parts like they would do with any other woman. Try to shame her because of how many person, people she has chosen to be with, not mm -hmm. the other way around. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I think this is getting old. You know, I mean, you, everybody knows how many boyfriends I've had. I'm 30 years old come up with something different. And that's all that it was. Yeah. And I didn't realize that it would, it would kind of spiral out and have such a wonderful domino effect. Because, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it, it gets tiring, mm -hmm. you know, it gets tiring. So what, I've had four boyfriends, I'm 30. I, it could be 15, but it, I stopped at four. Yeah. It's my choice, you know, so why are you, because you can't find anything else to talk about, trying to tell me, Yes, no. you know it's it's enough. I think women m women make choices. Do you think it was different because you're a woman in this industry? Why well, you're picked on like that, and particularly with that no. line of questioning? No, I think w women on TV or not on TV get called all mm -hmm. sorts of names every single day just because they they um, choose to do things differently. You know, and I just thought, well, I'm tired. I'm 30, and I've had enough. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm a bit more. You can vocal. also go for the jugular. Yeah, just and they do equally go for it. Yeah, I find myself a bit more stronger, a bit more confident, a bit more vocal. Yeah. Um, I find uh, myself a bit. Uh, I have. I can stand up for myself a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, so not a not a lot, funny. but slowly but surely, I'm starting to kind of come out of my shell. Right. And really stand up for what I believe in. So it must have been affirming to have that hashtag come about in the way that they did because people stood with you, really oh, yeah. Tabi being one, and of course what we saw, comments from different people. So it must have been reassuring. But yeah. at the end of the day, because you are, you, you photograph, you post what you post, we see this cool, calm, poised person. Mm. There has to be a moment where you allow yourself to be vulnerable. Absolutely. It, uh, just because I don't break down in front of people does mm. not mean it does not happen. Um, I choose where it happens and I feel safer around my friends and family because what people tend to forget is that, you know, there, there's some people who actually do enjoy when you are sad. They do enjoy when you are miserable. They will rejoice when you are, you know, just going through the worst time of your life. So why share that with them? Rather move to the side, mm -hmm. deal with it with people you can trust, which mm -hmm. are usually my best friends and family and a lot of prayer and then come back when you're stronger because when so you're trying you do to break down absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. i have to that's the reason why i'm so strong because the breaking down does happen it just happens around people who care enough to build me back up again yeah and not yeah. people who will make a mockery of the fact that i'm weak mm. yeah no and vulnerability is incredibly important you also talk about and yeah. uh, i think it was in the true love magazine the fact that your fans yeah. loved seeing this other side of you so allowing yourself to be vulnerable is key for people to be able to connect with you yes but clearly it happens on your terms it, it does happen on my away term. from the glaring <laughs> public it does and i'm slowly starting to kind of share a little bit more of myself as i grow um, you know, at season two of my reality show, I think the people who have been watching it is mm -hmm, more, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is more freer. It's a ca more carefree Bonang. You see a little bit more of my life. And also on social media, you know, in terms of my interviews. Um, I mean, Bonang last year, or the year before that, would not have said yes to this interview. You know, just because I'm, I'm, I guard myself right. so much. But in that guarding, it's a two-sided coin. Yes. Because you're insulated. Uh, on the one hand, you have the protection from that guarding, but then on the other hand, you're isolated. It has an isolating effect. Isolated how? From people, the level to which we can connect. Oh, I mean, I know what you mean. I mean, it, I find ways, you know, of uh, connecting with people. Mm -hmm. I just, because of what has happened in the 15 years in the industry, there's certain things that have happened to me that have made me do this to a lot of people and like a lot of what? things. Mm, you know, situations. Things, people, places. Don't be vague. Don't be vague. <laughs> experiences. What let's, are just things? Say, let's just say experiences and the industry have taught me just to be a little bit more careful. And therefore, you know, I've, I've unfortunately been molded into the person that you see right now. But it's getting there. But, you know, yeah, hopefully soon. Let's see. I don't like the vagueness, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the vagueness. Ultimately, it must make certain areas of your life really difficult because you can't be like the rest of us, mm. um, being able to walk in, down the street, holding hands, being affectionate to someone. It also restricts the possibilities for it you. It does. And 
I want to play a game with you, uh, considering some of the things that have happened in the relationship context. Would yeah. you say that that's been your blind spot, an area where some of your regrets and mistakes have happened? No. I never regret anything. I never regret the relationships I've been in, the people I've connected with, the friendships I've had, because yeah. at that very moment, that's exactly what I wanted. And whether those relationships end, mm -hmm. and when they do end, I think I was raised to always um, respect that particular connection. Mm -hmm. Whether it ended on good or bad terms, I, say, I think it says a lot about your character um, in terms of how you act when a particular connection does end. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of maturity also in discretion, and I've been raised to respect people far beyond even when you stop communicating with them. But it must make the pool of people that you can date literally this small. No. Tiny. No, I can date anybody. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. They, I date them on my terms, and sometimes they don't like it. Oh, I can imagine anyone who comes into your life yes. has to be aware of <laughs> everything that comes with it. They have to brace themselves. So let's yeah. play a quick game. We've got okay. a couple of pictures. You tell me yay or nay. Okay, oh, I already hate it. <laughs> you already hate it. <laughs> okay, let's see. You haven't seen the talents that we've lined up okay. for you, so let's play it. Yes or no? Channing Tatum, yes. Ooh, Definitely. all right. I can say yes. Next. Yes. We're trying to figure out your type um, here. Um, Chadwick, is that uh, yes, Wakanda? Yes, Mr. Bozeman. Yeah, okay, he's good. Mm, okay, not my type, but you go yeah, for it. Yeah, he's all right, he's a bit short maybe. <laughs> uh, I like him, he's funny. What? Well, he's, uh, yeah, he's okay, funny. Okay, so we know humor matters. F humor, you need to be very funny, <laughs> absolutely. Matters. And the next one, let's see. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's clear. I like his music, though. That's clear. <laughs> but hell no. <laughs> We're trying to figure Nahana out... Fela, what would my mom say? Um, come on, yeah, come okay. on, I don't like Bashimani Badi muscles. Oh, or but mm. I'm Karanyana. Yeah, man, you know, Busok. Mm, Busok. Something. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. But he's cool. What is your type? Um, tall, dark, nice. I think it doesn't matter. You just, has, you just have to be a decent human being. But they must find it hard to approach you. Um, not really. You get asked out regularly? Uh, yeah, they find ways. They, they DM me, they send like flowers. No news, I hope. Yeah, but because I, you know, I don't necessarily, I'm not, I don't go out. You know, I'm quite a recluse. I love to be at home with my friends and family. When I do go out, that's when, you know, the, the offers start coming in. But it's funny, it's gifts and diamonds and shoes oh. and DMs. Yeah, it's never up front when, I'm, when they see me. No, 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 never. Diamonds? Yeah. Say yes to the diamonds. Yes, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, there is at least one thing that our Queen Bee and King Bay, AKA Beyonce, have in common. <laughs> we'll find out what that is after the break. <laughs> Well, for any local entertainer, the ultimate dream has to be making that successful transition onto the global stage. That way, you get to join a very elite group of individuals, including the late legendary great uh, Brahu Masigela and Mamiria Mageba. Not forgetting our current international superstars, we've got Trevor Noah and Black Coffee. Well, Queen Bee has always had her eyes set on that prize. And is there, uh, currently working very, very hard to take her brand international. So let's explore that yeah. next. So Trevor has the Daily Show. Uh huh. Black Coffee has these international music festivals. Absolutely. What is the platform for you, globally speaking? You know, for me, I'm I'm more uh, uh, an African girl. You mm -hmm. know, the African continent fascinates me more than more than I think the rest of the world right now. Because I really think, you know, Africa's the pulse. I've got my, you know, my. I kind of sit on, on West Africa, Lagos and Nigeria. You know, I feel once you can penetrate Nigeria and be big there, uh, there's, it, there's a ripple effect that can happen all over the world, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, for me there, and hopefully along the lines of, you know, stuff that I love to do, travel, fashion, mm. um, uh, celebrities, music, gossip, interviewing people that I love all over the world. So it, it's, a, it's, it's happening. You know, over the past couple of months, I've spent very little time here at home. I'm always in Zambia and Zimbabwe and, and Lagos and all sorts of places because it's a deliberate move. So I, is that the what informed the decision to move from local representation to a global uh, company representing you? Yeah, I mean, you know, Sylvester and I had talked about it for a very long time. I had been with DNA for about four years. Yeah. And 
and we always said, you know, what else can we do? I mean, he has helped me and literally my, my brand sort of hit the roof in South Africa after a while. And he said to me, Bonang, I think, you know, it's time that you find somebody who can wow. take you there. And we looked around, you know, we both said, well, this is the next person. And I found CSA, which is a, a company that has offices in Los Angeles and Dubai and Lagos. Mm -hmm. And I guess, the, you know, the rest is history. So when it comes to the celebrity culture in South Africa, you know, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you don't help, you get criticized a lot. And even when you do, people will criticize and say you're only looking for attention. Yeah. So for you, how do you balance this, you know, the need to be charitable and play your part in transforming the society? I think the need to be charitable needs to come from within. It shouldn't come from people saying you should do it and it shouldn't be on anybody's terms mm -hmm. it is important mm -hmm. i think when you are somebody that has a platform somebody that has a voice somebody ha that has a following you need to in some way help to change the world or at least make the world a better place for one person you know it's something that i say all the time and i'm sure people have heard it from me millions and millions of times, is that blessings can't stop with you, especially if you've been blessed a lot. Yeah. You need to be yeah. a, a tributary, you know? God uses you to feed and to give to other people, mm. whether it's how you make them feel, whether it's inspiration, whether it's money, whether it's time, whether it's connection, whether it's a feeling of empowerment or aspiration. You, it can't it can't stop with you paying it then, forward yeah because then what's, and paying what's it forward. the point yeah. you know well you, you know what Bonang, over the weekend we yes. actually got to spend some time with some young ladies oh yeah <laughs> for whom you've changed their lives in different no. ways through the Bonang Matata <laughs> bursary fund look at you don't crumble now oh, so take a look at girl. this to see what i mean I'm Karen Mtetwa, I'm 22 years old, and I am one of the Bonang Mateba Bursary Fund beneficiaries. So when I was in matric, my parents were not working at the time. The family went through a lot during the matric Yaga Karen. The fears that I had most is about her knowing that she's in matric, what's going to happen the next year because My biggest dream was always to study media practice. Because of the situation at home, I had given up. I'd totally forgotten about it. It was something that was impossible, something I could never do. So it challenged my emotions. I was very, very troubled about it. My name is Ntumfuti Msimango. I live in Kahiso, Extension 6. I study at Boston, a Kruger Stop. I have applied a quite number of bursaries, probably 10. None of them I got it. And it frustrated me so bad that I just wanted to say, no, let me just leave this thing. It's not for me because uh, financially, I, I can't, you know. My parents are pensioners and my sisters are not working. So I had to live with that for a long time, which just ruined everything about me. My name is uh, Dr. Joe Lista Mabuela. I am a pastor of the Faith Community Central Church that is based in Kahiso Mukhala City. I have known uh, Fruti for, I think, for over 10 years now, and uh, I've been, I've had the privilege of being her mentor. There was a time when I said, God, have you forgotten about me? I could see a lot of depression written all over her. I could have been far in life. A close friend of mine was, just called me, she's like, you're one of the girls. I was at home. Boy, did I not scream. I jumped, I screamed, I told my parents, yeah, I did it. This is her. You see her on the TV, that's the one who's sponsoring my education. Can you believe it? That showed you that, you know, uh, celebrities like Queen B and others, the kind of impact they're having on young people. I see Ubonang as a godsend. She is, a, she still is an angel, Gulen Gulen. Can you believe that? It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. we've got there are 10 girls all in all yes. that you're funding through the Bonang Mateba Bursary yeah. Fund, but we've got two of them. We've got two of them here in studio. Where are they? Can they join us no. now on stage? Here we go. <gasps> oh my God. You didn't tell me I'm on a kid. <laughs> Hi, baby. How are you? Hi, this is Hi, How are you? Join us. I can't join sit. Us, yeah, my, my dress is too tight. My <laughs> oh, dress is too tight. Can't get up. My goodness. Oh, thank, thank you, you for telling us your stories. So, how far are you with your studies now? 
I'm doing my second year at Boston City mm. Campus, Kroger Stop, and I'm doing very, very well. I'm having my A's and B's, so it's just That's good. spectacular. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> you're ready yeah. to give up. You're getting a lot of no's. Exactly. Couldn't get that I couldn't. I've been applying, applying, but without success. Mm. Then I saw a post on Facebook that says Bonang wants to sponsor 10 ladies, and I said to myself, let me try it. But I, I didn't even think that I was going to get it, especially coming from the Queen <laughs> Bonang. And I just, let me, let me just do it, man. And one thing that I appreciate much is that she only wanted a motivational letter. Why do you think uh, you are capable of getting this mm -hmm, bursary, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that you are the right person for the bursary? So then I wrote my motivational letter, and I remember that he s she said that on the 25th of December, on a Christmas day, she's gonna, it's gonna be a gift to us. And I was holding my phone like this, and I went to a church service, and it didn't ring, it didn't <laughs> ring, God, I was I passed by. But day. on the 26th of January, Oh my God, oh. everything happened for me. Yes, so and now your dreams are unlocked. Your dreams are accessible. They were within grasp. Exactly, grass. exactly. Wow. So I just want to say to Bonang, thank you so much. Thank you made my dream to come true. And I want to decree the scripture. Uh, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 7, that says, No weapon from against you shall prosper. Mm. May God increase more, and may God bless you. You are shining, and I know that God has your back. I love oh. you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for being here. Tell us yeah. your story. Basically. Well, I'm Karen, you know, and a lot of people know me as the baby. <laughs> <laughs> the loud baby. The loud one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like, yo, I can't even say this enough. Like, she changed my life. I'm such a crybaby. She changed my life drastically. As the video says, I'd given up on my life because I wanted to be this. Like, every time I look at her, I want to mm. become a media personality and I want to be just like her. And, you know, she looked at me and got the deal for her children. She said to me, you've got it, you know, and to me it was like, you're more gay, like, do you understand? Like, I grew up watching her my yeah. entire life and she gave me her blessing and most of the, like, she gave me hope for my dreams and, like, I can't, like, it's not real. Like, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's oh. crazy. It's beautiful. Bonang, what is the plan with this bursary? Especially when um, you hear the way in which lives yeah. have been touched. I mean, you know, I know the impact having, you know, Basi and Kanye and mentors can do to kind of steer you in the right direction. Yeah. I know the impact that it has on a young woman's life, and I want to be that for, for somebody, for young South African girls. Mm. So I want, to, I want to create, you know, a sisterhood, a network, an alumni of girls right. who just assist each other and grow together and want good for one another. And hopefully they'll also pay it forward yes. because they've had this opportunity. Wow. Mm. Well... Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your journey and your story. Thank you so much. Well, when we come back, life lessons learned, mistakes that have been made, and some of her biggest regrets. No doubt this was an honor, but we also have to touch on some of the challenges that Bonang has been through. So after the break, get ready for our final chat with her. They have to talk about you because when they talk about themselves, no one listens. <laughs> this is the phrase that rings a bell because it is the first thing that you see on Bonang Mateba's timeline. She has pinned it. But when everyone is talking about you, they also want to talk about the mistakes that you've made and the regrets that you may have, as well as the life lessons that you take away from them. So today, the stage has belonged to Bonang. So let's get her thoughts on some of these issues. Now, it is a profound saying and it certainly reflects the way conversations have gone about you. Yeah. But there surely have been lessons that you've learned. Yes, absolutely. In terms of, uh, you know, how, number one, who you maybe associate with, mm -hmm. um, how you treat people, um, how you maybe grow what you learn from those experiences. It's taught me a lot of things. You know, different things that have happened to me in my life have come with different lessons. It would be difficult to kind of almost put everything in one solid paragraph. But right. I think as you grow and every connection you make, it's imperative as a human being to make sure that you take the lesson away from it. Because yeah. then it becomes like a futile co connection. And I don't believe you meet people without there being a reason. Mm, a, a reason, reason for them. A yeah, a reason yeah. and a season. There's a reason why they're there. 
there's a reason why they either stay or there's a reason why they leave. And when they do leave, I think the, the next best thing, in, or if you're somebody who wants to better themselves, is to ask yourselves why it happened, why it ended, what the lesson was, and how do I not make the same mistakes again? Right. Yeah. That's incredibly important because you have to take accountability and you also have to be responsible. Absolutely. DJ Zintle is on the show tomorrow. Yes. She's our guest. Yes. So what goes through your mind? Do you ever think about her? A lot. I think about a lot of people all the time. I think about a lot of things people say all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think about a, a lot of what, how people, what, what choices people make all the time. Well, what about your own choices? What comes to mind when you do think about her? A lot of things. Regret? Would you have done things differently? A lot of things. Such as? A lot of things. Bona, in a this, lot of things. you did an interview <laughs> for, for True Love, and I'm going to quote you. Uh, you talk about rising above scandals. You talk about letting go of regrets. And you also talk about the art of an apology. You say yes. there are apologies that you will wait for, but never receive. Then there are those apologies you have to make, but will never get around to. And in both instances, it's very important for you to acknowledge your role and make peace with it. Forgive yourself and the other people, then you let it go. Absolutely. I also really truly believe in, um, you know, the art of moving on. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a certain, there's a certain, there's a certain <sighs> delay that comes with, with wallowing. And you know, this morning I woke up and I said, good morning, today's going to be a great day. Mm -hmm. Choose joy, mm -hmm. because joy is a choice. Happiness is deliberate, moving on, is intentional. But we can only move on once we've taken responsibility, once and we've I addressed have. the things and that I have, but need not, addressing. Absolutely. And I think what people want me to do yeah. is to speak about my personal life mm -hmm. publicly, which is something that I have not done and something that I will not do and something that I will not start doing anytime soon. But in light of everything, would you do things differently? I would do a lot of things Considering the lessons that you've I would do a lot of things differently. And I think a lot of people would have done things differently too. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. just you. Yeah. So it's not a case of it being piled on you. Do you think that there's a collective responsibility? You know what also what Azza, what you need to remember is that I have not said anything about yes. anything. And I think it's better that I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Sitting down with you after all these years. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I know we're trending, but hey, yes. you are she who reigns supreme. Thank you very much. Yeah, and she's maintained it. You know, Thank that you. cool, calm, collected. Um, so when it's all done and said, folks, that is the gracious, the ever gracious Bonang Mateba. And I want to thank her for being my very first guest on the show. I'm looking forward to an adventure and a journey with you um, as we embark on this new era of Real Talk. So I'll see all of you folks at home tomorrow. Same time, same place, where I'll be joined by the ever-poised DJ Zintle. Stay tuned.